to this presentation on ecosystem structure to support the IB Environmental Systems and Society course. Firstly, let us define what an ecosystem is. An ecosystem is made up of biotic components, which are living organisms, namely plants and animals. These organisms interact with one another, for example in a predator-prey relationship or through reproduction. Therefore, these living things can be said to be a community of organisms. In living together, the biotic components must interact with the abiotic or non-living components of the ecosystem. For example, using the air for respiration, using water to obtain nutrients, or using the soil in which to grow. Finally, these interactions all take place in a defined area, for example, in a pond or in a forest. Let us now pull all of this together to form a definition of an ecosystem. It can be said that an ecosystem is a community of living organisms that interact with their non-living environment within a defined area. As has already been stated, the biotic components of the ecosystem interact with each other. The most common way that we see living things interact with one another is through feeding relationships. When studying specific ecosystems, environmentalists examine the feeding relationships to better understand how the ecosystem functions. Feeding rela relationships are usually shown in diagrams called food chains or food webs. A food chain is a feeding hierarchy in which organisms in an ecosystem are shown in a succession to represent the flow of food energy and the feeding relationships between them. All food chains begin with a producer, which is an organism that is able to capture light energy from the sun and transform it into chemical energy through the process of photosynthesis. Sunflowers are one such plant that is able to produce its own energy through photosynthesis. Organisms such as sunflowers that are able to produce their own energy may also be referred to as autotrophs. Producers are then eaten by primary consumers, organisms that cannot produce their own energy, but are able to eat and digest plants. In this food chain, the grasshopper eats the sunflower. Organisms that have to obtain their energy by eating other organisms are known as heterotrophs. An organism that eats plants to obtain its energy is also known as a herbivore. The primary consumer may then be eaten by a secondary consumer, which is the animal that is able to eat other animals. In this example, the field mouse eats the grasshopper. Animals that are able to eat other animals are also known as carnivores. In turn, the secondary consumer may be eaten by a tertiary consumer, in this case the snake. The snake is also a carnivore. And finally, the snake is eaten by the quaternary consumer, the hawk. The hawk is therefore said to be at the top of the food chain for that ecosystem, as it has no predator. As the hawk eats animals, it can be said to be a carnivore. It is also known as the top carnivore, owing, owing to its position in the food chain. When we examine the food chains of an ecosystem, we want to see how many feeding levels there are so that we can better understand how the energy is transferred through the system. Each feeding level in the food chain is known as a trophic level. As you can see in this food chain, there are five trophic levels consisting of a producer, a primary consumer, a secondary consumer, a tertiary consumer, a quaternary consumer. Let me go through this again. As you can see in this food chain, there are five trophic levels consisting of a producer, which is the sunflower, a primary consumer, which is the grasshopper, a secondary consumer, which is the field mouse, a tertiary consumer, which is the snake, a quaternary consumer, which is the hawk. We have already mentioned that animals gain their energy by only eating plants are known as herbivores. And we have also noted that animals that gain their energy by eating other animals are known as carnivores. 
Animals that gain their energy by eating both plants and other animals are known as omnivores. The raccoon here in the picture is an example of an omnivore and eats a wide variety of foods. Preferred foods for the raccoon includes grain, berries, insects, small mammals, eggs and young water birds. Other examples of omnivores include bears, crows and humans. A food web is slightly different from a food chain in that it shows multiple feeding relationships in the ecosystem. This way we can see the importance of different organisms in the ecosystem. For example, in this ecosystem, should the raven become extinct, it is likely that there will be more pikers, Douglas squirrels, Pacific tree frogs and checker spot butterflies, as the raven will no longer be consuming these organisms as a food source. Additionally, should a disease cause a decline in the number of Douglas squirrels, there would be less food for the black-tipped jackrabbit, which may in turn affect its population, or increase the competition for other sources of food, such as the Pacific tree frog. It is also worth noting here that when drawing specific food chains from the web, organisms may occupy different trophic levels. For example, the mountain lion in this food web could be considered a secondary consumer when it eats the mule deer exclusively. However, it also preys on secondary consumers in other food chains shown in the web. The highest feeding relationship that the mountain lion has in the food web determines its overall trophic level. In this case, it's a tertiary consumer. Decomposers are often the forgotten element of food chains. Decomposers are insects that gain their energy by eating the dead plant and animal matter left over from the food chain. They are also an important contributor to the cycling of nutrients throughout ecosystems. Sour bugs are excellent examples of decomposers. They feed pr primarily on detritus, dead plant and animal matter, including rotting wood. They are very effective decomposers and are often an integral part of a compost heap. Decomposers break down dead organisms from every level in the food chain. This presentation has covered all the key aspects of ecosystem structure. Thanks for listening.